Al, we have been we've been saving this topic for the series or this episode, excuse me, for months now uh-huh. because you know it fits the spooky season. It you know it's the perfect time to talk about it. And boy, howdy, did we really you know. We had to savor this wait. Worth the wait, huh? It was so worth the wait, <laughs> let me tell you. Oh, boy. Oh, man. We are rounding out the spooky season with one more spooky topic to talk about here on this week's episode of the Season Let Me Check Up OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Allen Ladium. Hello. This is episode number 305. You can get this episode in the 305 if you want. You can get a little you can get it for free there. But only there. Uh but yeah, we're talking about Netflix's Resident Evil television series. Yep. And it sure is a series. It sure has some episodes. It sure does. This is its own thing. It is not tied into the live action movies. It's not tied into any of the CG movies or series that they've done. It's not really it's kind of tied into the games. I mean, there are there are actual references to things that happen in the games. Yeah, so I feel like it's more tied into that, but it's not like super duper tied into that. It's kind of like alternate universe Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we are talking Ooh. about uh, this week. And boy, howdy, we have some things to talk about with this show. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Wow! Uh, this this series uh, debuted on Netflix on July fourteenth, twenty twenty two, where it dropped all eight episodes because that's how Netflix does things. Unless it's and, uh, JoJo, in which case it's like no. Let's just tank all the the hype around this series and just drop things whenever we decide to drop things with no notice or anything. Yep. Uh, let's talk about some of the production for this series, the marketing, and the reception, because it definitely had a reception. Yep, sure did. Uh, in January 2019, it was announced that Netflix was in development of a series based upon the Resident Evil franchise. No major updates were given until August of 2020, when it was revealed that the series had been picked up for eight one-hour episodes. It was also revealed that Andrew Dab Dab on him Dab on him would write the series in addition to him serving as an executive producer producer and showrunner. So it's his Ron, fault. Yeah, it's his fault. There you go. What what, what else have you done, Mr. Dab? <laughs> Besides Dab. Dab. Uh he did two movies in 2004 and 2005 that were short films. Okay. Uh he was a writer on Supernatural. Okay. So that tells you a lot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> From seasons five to season fifteen. Oof. So that's what he has been doing, apparently. Okay. But yes. Uh, in addition, uh, I heard that Bronwyn Hughes was also executive producer and directed the first two episodes. That is also a person. Okay. Uh, production was originally set to take place from June to October of 2020 to be handled by Moonlighting <laughs> Films, which previously worked on Resident Evil: The Final Chapter. Which was the last live action film, I guess? Presumably, because it says the final chapter. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, due to the COVID 19 pandemic, however, these plans were shelved for the rest of the year. Over 2020, the series went through retooling with the promotion of Jeffrey Howard as co executive producer in place of Dab, who was busy overseeing Grendel, which is like another show I guess he's doing. Uh, production resumed on February 19th, 2021, with principal photography split into four production blocks and concluding on July 9th. On August 26th, 2022, Netflix canceled the series after one season. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 That tells you a lot right there. One month after it launched. <laughs> Which is not good. No. Uh, they filmed this in South Africa. Because obviously that's where the show takes place as well. So I guess they're just like, oh, there well, you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> South Africa. Uh, here's marketing. While Netflix maintained a press embargo on the series before and during principal photography, a synopsis for an early series pitch was accidentally published and then deleted. Similarly, similar, similarly... That word's hard <laughs> to early, say, legitimately. Yeah, an early copy of the first episode's script was published on the Internet Archive before being taken down due to a copyright complaint. Uh, the series was officially announced in August of 2020, with Andrew Dabb posting the front page of the completed Welcome to New Ra- Raccoon City script, with the principal cast being announced near the end of the filming in June 2021. 
Marketing for the series proper began on November 3rd, 2021, with the official with the opening of the official Instagram page, Whoa. which posted an image of a mutant dog. Oh God! Uh, two trailers appeared in May on May 11, 2022. The first two episodes aired at a private press screening. Uh, in attendance, Dab described the original universe of the show as featuring the video games as their backstory and basis. And then here is your critical reception of the series. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 54% approval rating with an average of 5.8 out of 10 based on 50 critic reviews. Uh, the website's critics' consensus reads, While Resident Evil comes closer than previous adaptations to honoring the beloved video game's labyrinthian lore, the zombie this zombie serial could use more brains. <laughs> That's a closer... I mean, I don't know. I, I've never watched those live action ones, so I don't know. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't watched the live action ones. That's fair. The films, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on Metacritic, it has a 53 out of 100 based on 16 critics, critics indicating mixed or average reviews. The audience and fan reaction to the show was overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly negative. Yep. Uh, audience viewership. According to Samba TV, 988,000 U.S. households watched the premiere of the series during its first four days streaming on Netflix. The series premiere over indexed most with black and Hispanic viewers by plus 29% and plus 27% respectively. It debuted second behind Stranger Things Season 4, four and then dethroned it days later. From July 11th to July 17th, the show was the second most streamed on Netflix globally and was within the top 10 in over 92 countries. I wonder how far people actually got into it before they dropped it, though. Yeah, that's... that's, <laughs> that's fair. Um, so, yeah. This show is bad. It's terrible. <laughs> The uh, I I remember telling you this because like I watched the first episode before you did and I was like, yo, the production value on this show is awful, it's really bad. <laughs> just awful. Oof. Like you can see within the first five minutes that just like it's, it's bad. Like you can see very clear evidence of green screening, the uh, like the prosthetic and makeup for like the zombies is just really poorly done. It looks so bad. The CG in this show isn't great. No. It's just, there was not a whole lot of money thrown at this, it seemed like. Like, there's obviously, like, nothing in here that says, like, this is how much they spent on production of this series, probably because it was, like, $2. <laughs> and the rest of it went to all of the weird music that they decided to put in this show. Yeah, that that was a choice. Yeah. That was a choice. Um, it was a choice. <laughs> I found a website earlier that had all the licensed music listed. I should find that again. I was trying to see if this was on IMDb, if it was on here or not. Um, but I don't think it is. Yeah, there was there was a, a website that I found that was like, here's every song broken down by episode. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, Is this it? Or is this the one that ends at episode four? Nope, this is it. Yep. Um, okay, yeah, I also have this as well. Are you on a website called Den of Geek? No, I'm on HITC. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> but it apparently has all the, the music on here. But yeah, it's just like they put a bunch of music in here. Yep. A bunch. A bunch. And it's just like... I don't know if it really needed this. Like, you also spent a, mon a lot of money on this, a clearly. A lot of money. So, like, did you really need all of this licensed music to be in here? No. No, that, the answer is no. You didn't. No, no. <laughs> it didn't add anything. No. I don't know. They had a song in here that's also in the OC, and I, that was the only good part of the show for me. Which one? Or one of the only good, uh, Into Dust by Mazzy Star. Okay. I immediately was like, oh, I know the song, because it's in the OC, like, five <laughs> times. <laughs> I was um, like, yeah. There was that one song, it's like, I think it's called Out of My Mind, um, or it might be not. It, it, anyway, there was one that I was like, is this Mumford and Son? But, <laughs> yeah. but it wasn't. It just sounded very much like it, but it had a subtitle of, like, Resident Evil, and it's like, cool great great good job um but yeah that's where the entire budget went was i mean bad. it's not wrong yeah it's very bizarre it, it yeah. was a choice it was a choice um it was a choice. they got that olive garden money and they're like what if we just <laughs> spend it all on the music god that olive garden scene is so good <laughs> that's the only part of this entire series that i was just like you know what yes 
No, that's a lie. The other part was um, like the reveal of of one of the big twists that I was just like, sure, all right, mm-hmm. this is stupid. I love it. I absolutely had the same reaction because I was like, all right, yeah, sure, 100%. This is very dumb Resident Evil. I believe this would happen. I think it was totally. the same episode, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was the only episode that was like, all right, you can stay. Well, parts of you can stay. The rest of you is terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, even that episode had parts of it. was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, like, one thing that we should clarify is that split into two timelines, you have, like, the, like, 2022... Um, the, the two lead gals are Billy and Jade Wesker, who are Albert Wesker's kiddos. Um, and you have their like 14 year old teenager shenanigans. And then you have the future in 2036, um, where you are following mostly Jade to see what, what is going on with the zombie the apocalypse. World. Yeah. Yep. I feel like the split timeline of this series really was a detriment to the show. I agree. Like, I think if you would maybe have done, like, one or the other, it would have benefited it better than how they do it because, like, there's real, like, they do a lot of jump cuts between the two where it's, like, you don't really know exactly where you are for a second yeah. until it's, like, okay, now I guess these this is where we are because these characters are here or these versions of these characters are here. And it's not just, like, like... It makes sense a lot of times when they do these jump cuts. It's like, all right, we've done this scene in the in the present day. Let's go back to the past now. And you're just like, huh? Wait, what? What? Excuse me? Yeah. What? Are we here? O- okay, I guess. It's just it's very bizarre. I think the way they kind of like try and push both of these timelines forward to try and tell the story, and it just doesn't really work out that well. I feel like if you would even cut the entire future segment of it, it would have been like, all right. Yeah, because like I feel like the only reason that future stuff is in here is because they need to have zombies in a post-apocalyptic scenario, right? In order to make this Resident Evil, like you could have left the same mysteries that you get from mysteries and quotation marks as much as I can think that there are mysteries. Um, you could have left those still with the the twenty twenty two timeline. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, flesh that out quite a bit more without doing, like, cool, Jade is running away from Umbrella and zombies for the 15th time. Also, she's going to get a concussion. (laughs) She's going to get knocked out again. (laughs) It's like, none of this is actually interesting. Yeah. I think if, like you said, like, the the mysteries would have been much, I think, better suited if it was just this... 2022 stuff Mm -hmm. because you can definitely set up a lot of stuff for, like, a next season if it had happened. Oh, yeah, totally. And that would have been, all, I think, a lot more interesting, especially if, like, the like the finale was, like, the setup of, like, here's the first infected and how everything starts to spiral out of control. Right. But you've seen everything kind of spiral out of control, so you know things are going to happen. So, like, none of the, those reveals are really that interesting. Correct. When they do them in the, ba- in the past and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Mm-hmm. I legitimately feel like you could have cut that entire, like, part out and... I wouldn't say it would be good, but it would at least be somewhat tolerable, maybe. Yeah, it's like they're they're literally making two different shows here, and it's just gluing them together and trying to make them fit. Yeah, like one's a one's a circle circular hole, and the other's just a square peg, and they're just trying their best to make them fit together. Trying to make it happen, it's, it's, yeah. it does not happen. No, no, no. This this show was bad. Yeah. Um, one thing that we repeatedly said, and I, I want to, I want to emphasize this and reemphasize this, is, um, Lance Reddick acts his ass off in this. Like, he, he gave it his all. He did mm-hmm. the very best that he could with the script that he was given. Um, uh, he is a, a shining point in this, in this series. <laughs> The the showrunners should just thank their stars they were able to get him for this series because he is the only bright spot of this entire show. He acts circles around everyone else yep. and makes this show watchable at times. Correct. Correct. Absolutely yes. Um like he's he is like everything we were saying about the one episode that was good, all him. 
Every single mm-hmm. bit of it was him. Like he he's obviously playing a different version of Albert Wesker because you know this is not like necessarily the game version because like he's he's a scientist now and everything. It's like you know you're like what what's what's this doing? He's got kids and everything, but he still is able to play that very sinister character at times and like just flip it on his on a script when he needs to. Mm-hmm. And then once you get to the weird reveal <laughs> of the twist and everything, and he has to play multiple characters, he's able to play all these different characters incredibly well and give them their own dynamics. Like they're and very everything. distinct. Mm-hmm. And like show off like what how what they actually got from you know original Albert Wesker and everything. Mm-hmm. And, like, how they are different personalities, essentially. Yeah. And I thought that was incredibly well done by him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, he he did the very best with what he was given. And he is mm-hmm. he is the watchable part of this show. 100%. I just felt like 100%. that was necessary to say because everything else about the show is f- terrible. And yeah, I, absolutely. I just wanted to give him some applause and some credit for the good work that he did. Yeah, it's it's, it's so good. <laughs> um yes. Yes. <sighs> oh man. There's a lot of just parts of the show that are just dumb. Yeah. Like a lot of the writing is kind of just incredibly poor. They're like a lot of especially like the the dialogue between the younger Jade and Billy are just like teenagers don't talk be, like that hip teens and zoomer talk but it's like it's real bad like the very first episode she talks about like reading zootopia porn and i'm like what we gotta be edgy for the sake of edgy also i love how they they name drop uh decadence which is a which is an anime series obviously they talk about like oh this is very hard to get and rare anime and it's like no that's not true at all (laughs) that's super not true I don't know what you're talking about. And then they also like name drop a torrent site. Yeah. Which is like, what? And they mispronounce it. <laughs> Whoops. Which is even better. Whoops. Because that's things you do. Um, I think we're just going to talk about random shit in this show. Because like going through all of the, the, the episodes, talk about what happens. There's is, no reason to. That would bore us to, to bits. Um, I want to talk about first thing because coming off of the the final episode, like the final episodes, I should say, because I watched those last night. Uh-huh. Man, Billy's heel turn in this is so bad. Very, Makes very bad. Zero sense. No sense at all. And you're just left wondering, like, why would this be a thing? Yep. Other than we want melodrama between the daughters. Yep. It makes no sense. And then, like, there's the whole what I control Evelyn thing. It's like, why? Why do you control Evelyn? That makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, it was so doofy when, um, like, they had that whole, like, singing and dancing sequence. And, like, why? Mm-hmm. Why are we doing this? And, um, like, you, you see through, like, the end of, like, the last episode where, like, you know, she gets kidnapped and Evelyn's trying to be like, oh, I'm the only one who tells you the truth and everything. And, like, it feels like, oh, well, we're setting up, like, she's going to get indoctrinated by Umbrella. And that's how she's going to become this villain later in life. Mm-hmm. But then, no, she's, like, she realized, oh, you're lying to me and everything about this is is not true. And I watched you murder your son after I bit him. I mean, that was my bad, but oops, you're kind of a terrible person. This whole company is a terrible place and everything. We got to go. But, you know, 14 years later, I'm just going to go run the place and be like, oh, I got to change the future because, you know, the T virus stripped me of my emotions, the, the ones I don't need. All my anxieties are gone, which that's not how mental health works. No. For starters. No. No, no not at all. And it's just like, oh, yeah, well, they stripped me of my emotions. So now I don't need those. And now I can see that, uh, all of the everything that happened in the past was bad and everything, and you're a piece of trash, Jade, and all this sort of stuff. It's like this is so poorly done. <laughs> it does not make a bit of sense at all. No. And even in like that entire sequence, she's like saying things that don't match what we know. Yeah. Because like there, there's one part where she's like talking about um how their dad died, and it's like that. What? That doesn't match. None of none of that matches. I don't know. It was, it was stupid. There's like no justification whatsoever. And there's no build up in terms of like the past for it. Yeah. It's 
it makes no sense. And like with her saying something like, oh, that was the like best night of my life. It was such a game changer, blah, blah, blah. You don't see any of that when you're actually seeing that night happen. No. Like she's panicking. She's freaking out. She's traumatized. Yeah. Like there are really terrible things happening all around her and she's just not having a good time. Obviously like that. I would not have a good time either. Um, <clears throat> But we don't get any of that indication of like, this was the best night of my life. It changed everything. It's like, what? What? Yeah. And there's no indication of like why she would have went back to back to umbrella. No. At all. No. Like, it's just so poorly done. Yep. <laughs> also, I, I couldn't help but laugh that, like, when they show her, her older self, that she still has the same dyed hair. And I was like, that's, that's no way she would have had the same dyed hair for 14 years. Like, that's just not going to happen. The only reason you did that is because people would not know who this character was if she didn't have it. <laughs> I thought they were indicating that that was, like, natural. There's no way that's natural. Well, I know there's no way there's natural, unless, like, they're implying that like she's an edgy teen who dyes her hair and is a vegan and is into <laughs> alternate stuff like that is clearly dyed hair because she thinks it's a good look there's no way she would have kept that for 14 years no there's no way and also like where are you getting that damn hair dye in the zombie apocalypse so dumb where are you, where are you able to bleach your hair in the zombie apocalypse umbrella just makes that stuff now oh well okay I mean, we should have known this was bad when no one in this series got impaled and then bled out to form the Umbrella logo. You're right. You're right. You know what? People give Resident Evil 6 all the time. Like, Resident Evil 6 is a masterpiece compared to this. A <laughs> masterpiece. And I will defend that game to, to the death of me. But um, I said when we started this, Jake Mueller is right there. Mm-hmm. So Resident Evil 6 also did the whole, like, Albert Wesker's kid thing so much better. Yeah, but he didn't have a sibling that he could have melodramatic in or instances with and all of this sort of stuff. Also, also, can we talk about how Billy was just also just basically an awful character throughout and just, like, gaslighting Jade most of the time and be like, I can't believe you don't like me. You're a terrible sister. You hate me. You just want me to die and everything. It's like, what the f is wrong with you it was so manipulative and so abusive like, like maybe that's the in the way they're trying to indicate it or indicate that like she's going to turn heel later in life is because she's kind of a person throughout most of this series and like eventually she's going to gaslight her into thinking like oh you're just terrible you hate me you're awful i'm gonna go to umbrella now like that sort of thing but even then still like there's no good one-to-one -one connection here other than she was in the past and now she's in the future, but it's in a different way. Different ways, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna be mad when I have to bleep all that out later. But you know, <laughs> but you're right. You're right. Like she's so manipulative and like awful to Jade. And I mean, like Jade is not a good character either. No, they're both kind of to each other. Yeah, and in general, yes. Um, but like Billy has zero redeeming factors to her. And, like, I, I keep thinking of the, the point where she gets, like, super f***ed off because Jade talks to Simon. Yeah. And it's like, bro, is she not allowed to talk to anybody who's not you? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's essentially kind of what she implies. Oh, I yeah. know. It is. It absolutely is. And that's so messed up. It's like at a... It's like, what is happening? Weird, abusive relationship there between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Which, like, it, it, I feel like at the beginning, it's not really that showcase. It feels like more just, like, Jade's kind of not great towards her. It's just kind of like, I don't want to be here. I'm very venting my anger. And Billy's just like, ah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I guess they're trying to show, like, oh, once she gets infected with the, the virus, now she's more angry about things and all this sort of stuff. And it's just like, eh, Yes, angry. Eh. And also, like, I get that the fact they're trying to show that she has, like, immunity to the T virus or, like, some sort of immunity to it. Yeah. But, like, they spend, like, four episodes showing that she's going to die from these symptoms. And then the next four episodes, she's like, I'm fine. Yeah, whatever. Nothing's happening to me. Yeah. I'm a-okay. I'm perfect health. <laughs> um, 
Also, like, <laughs> it's very unclear to me, like, why they are so extremely hostile towards their dad. Yeah, like, I guess because he's weird and takes their blood. I mean, he's like, a vampire. yeah, the, the blood taking is a little shady, but, like, he genuinely seems to care about them and, like, tries to spend time with them and tries to take care of them. And, like, I said that twice. Um, sorry, my brain's <laughs> stupid. Um, but, like, when they get there, he's he's trying to see, like, are you okay? Are you are you doing all right? Like, we're in a new place, and I'm sorry that we had to do this, but, you know, I had to for my job. Like, he's he's not a bad dad. I mean, he's not there a lot of the time, which I think is probably the, the big thing that they're kind of resentful for. Yeah. But also, like, like you said, he does try, at least. Yeah, I mean... It's not like he's just, like... There's an effort. Doesn't go anywhere and, like, just abandons them or just ignores them all the time. Right. He's not, like, a completely absent dad. Right. Um... And, you know, he's not, like, verbally abusive to them. He's not physically abusive to them. Like, he he seems to really care about their well-being. Um, Mm -hmm. And then they're just, like, at him. And, and, I mean, like... Edgy teens are edgy teens. Edgy teens are edgy teens, yes. And and I think that part of that is that, you know, the show wants us to inherently distrust Albert Wesker, which is, is, you know, fine. That makes sense. Um, But that's not the way to do it. No. Um, I think there are much better ways to do it. I mean, like, the whole scene in the the principal's office with the the girl who, like, was going to press charges against Billy for hitting her and blah, blah, blah. Um, Like, that shows how much of, like, an <laughs> he can be. And... Yeah, which I thought that was a great scene in terms of him. <laughs> yeah, 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 it totally was. Um, but like more of that is what they should have done mm-hmm. if they're trying to be like, oh, you shouldn't trust Albert Wesker, as opposed to just like grumpy teenage girl, and like it's it's very very weird. It would have been better, like that would have worked, I think, more if either of those two would have been likable. Okay, yeah, I think you're right. Because you would definitely side with them more if, like, they were more likable characters, but they're kind of not. No. So you're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah, they're they're absolute f- hot garbage. Yeah. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible. Can we talk about the twist? Let's talk about the twist because it's the only like only good part of the show. It's the dumbest thing in the show. It's the most Resident Evil dumb f- thing that they could have done, which is great. Yep. A hundred percent think it's great. Yep. Uh, they reveal that in 2005, or like sometime in before that, Albert Wesker cloned himself. Yep. <laughs> and, and made three clones of himself. So there's Al, there's Bert, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. there's Albie. Yes. Um, which I I picked up after this that Evelyn specifically always calls him Al. Yes. And does not call him Albert. And I was like, aha, that's that's why. Um, aha. <laughs> Um, and then you also see the original Albert Wesker in like full on oh like my God. Matrix gear. Um, they put f-ing a hair piece on Lance Reddick to match the Wesker hair, and it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> he's doing like the super speed movement when he's fighting off Umbrella, and I was like, yep. "This is good. This is good." <laughs> um, and I mean, they they do clarify like, oh yeah, Albert Wesker died in 2009, which I had to double check. I was like, okay, yeah. And they did say he died in a volcano, which is true because mm-hmm. Chris Redfield punched him into a volcano. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, like they, they do mention like, or they go into like some of the specificities, specificities of some of the games like that. And then they also show off some stuff from uh, RE2 of, of Raccoon City and what happened there. Yep. And go into like the event or kind of go into like what actually happened there and or what supposedly did wasn't supposed to be known happened there. Right. Well, it got covered up there. It got so nuked. Yeah. So they talk a little bit about that stuff. But yeah, Albert Wesker is quoting himself. Like, I'm just like, yeah, sure. That makes sense. I believe that would happen. I, He's a weird dude. I legitimately was like, yeah, sure. Okay. That makes sense. Sure. And they were also talking about making the, the, the chest thing that he eventually puts on Jill, right? Yes. They did yeah. talk about that. Um, That's what they were working on when the, the like raid thing happened. Yeah. Um also just as a side note, um Evelyn is like the 
daughter, a granddaughter or something of um, James Marcus, mm -hmm. um, who was one of the like originators of T-Virus in the first game. Um, right. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, like this whole clone thing was just so funny. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, yep, because you, the way that you learn this is that, um, Al gets thrown in like a cell thing and then like a hole is popped through the wall and you see Bert and he's like, hey bro, what's up? <laughs> you see bearded Lance Reddick. Yep. Yep. And then <laughs> he's like, hey bro. And you're like, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Bert's a little unhinged. Yeah, like he 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 definitely has more of like emotions and personality than Al does. Yeah, but also he is like you said a little unhinged because he'll just like go straight up murder people if he needs to. Yeah, just he's straight like, up murder. Whatever. He did not care, and then smile about it. Okay, <laughs> which leads us to like maybe the greatest scene in this entire show. Oh is no, when... it's not even maybe. It is the greatest scene. You're, in you know, America. you're right. You're right. Like Al is locked up in Umbrella because of reasons. Yep. Um, and Bert decides to like get out by just literally. Becoming slashing, Al. By becoming him, but also like slashing guard's neck with a razor blade yep. <laughs> and everything. And like he goes and picks up Jade and Billy from school and they're like, why do you have this car? He's like, oh, you know, I thought it would be an upgrade. <laughs> it just like speeds off and they're like, oh. <laughs> and then he takes them to the Olive Garden. The Olive Garden, which I, I, <laughs> I, I told you, I was like, I thought that it was going to be like a knockoff version of Olive Garden, but no, it is no. the actual Olive Garden. They show the menus, they show the logo, <laughs> it is the Olive Garden. They name drop it. Yeah, and then he's just like, <laughs> he's looking through the menus like, unlimited pasta, unlimited breadsticks. Unlimited breadsticks. We gotta get this, and he's just so excited about this. And they're the girls are just like, "What is happening here?" They just starts like going to town on those breadsticks when they get there. Like even just watching him eat those was hysterical <laughs> because of the way so he was doing good. it. Um, and then he gets mad because they won't give multiple unlimited baskets of breadsticks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> To, so the girls could have theirs and he could have his. And he just takes them out of the basket and throws it at the waiter. like, all right, well, the basket's free. Now we go get me some more breadsticks. Yep. <laughs> and the girls are just like, um, uh, we're going to scream. <laughs> this is not okay. And he also tells them like, oh, yeah, we're clones, by the way. Yeah. Yep. My brother, but we're also clones, you know, so whatever. Yeah. And then like Umbrella shows up to like get him back and he just starts beating them up. Like he literally throws a guard through a winch or a car window and just po looks up at them and is like, smile. Yeah. It, <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. It's it's like the weirdest, like, it's so good. It's, it's like mm -hmm. reassuring, like I'm taking care of it, smile. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he like proceeds to bash a man's face in against the wall of the Olive Garden. Yeah. <laughs> You know, casually. Casually, like there is a blood mark where he bashed this man's face in at the Olive yeah. Garden. You know, as you do. It was what happens when you don't get your unlimited breadsticks. No, you're right. You're right. Um, those two bits are the only things that I think are good about this this series. Really, are the the clone scene and <laughs> and the Olive and Garden. The Olive Garden. Um, I did. I did like the scene where like Bert finds Billy in an umbrella when she's like freaking out, and like he kind of gets her does out the of the same it thing and, like, with the hands above your head thing. Yeah, and then like also just kind of like gives her this like talk about like, hey, not everything's normal, and people have things they're going through. It's fine. Like you know, you just gotta deal with it. And everything, just figure out things how you gotta figure them out, and all this sort of stuff. It was a good pep give talk. Those, give this nice pep talk, motivational speech to kind of like you know get her through this this bad situation and everything. <laughs> And, and also it's kind of like, yo, if we don't get your dad out of here, bad things are probably going to happen. <laughs> but he also does, like, explain to her, like, yeah, your dad's maybe done some weird and shady stuff, but, like, he's not a- He also cares about he's you. He's not a bad dude at all. And, no. And so that's another thing that was so confusing to me is that, like, Billy turns super evil, but she's the one that gets this pep talk and then is like, oh, we got to go back for him. We got to we gotta protect dad. And it's like, huh? Yeah. It's, it's so weird. 
It's very weird. They, I mean, we should have known that there was going to be some issues with this series when the last episode was called Revel- Revelations. Oh, uh, I mean, if it were called Revelations 2, it would have been an even bigger problem. Yeah, we could have had a ghost girl pointing at things. Po- pointing? Pointing <laughs> and throwing rocks at things. Nice. And, and Claire being an idiot. Oh, God. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they they super duper were setting up things for a next season for the show. They were. In this final episode, which is pretty sad to see. Because, like, I feel like if you're a Netflix series, you shouldn't do that because of the way Netflix is about just axing things right and left. Right. Like they really were like super duper setting things up, like because the end of the the end of the series basically has a couple of big like cliffhangers, I guess you would say. Like, yeah. Jade's daughter gets kidnapped by Billy. Yep. Also, Jade's daughter can like communicate with the zombies somehow, or like make them so they won't attack her because she gets to befriend the big alligator, and then we don't get cool little kid alligator shenanigans because the alligator dies like a minute later. A minute later, it's insane. I was so upset. Jade gets shot and is bleeding out also during all this. Her her um, husband's bleeding out by the water. Yeah. And then in the past, we see the whole, like, umbrella explosion. Uh, Al dies, gets blown up because he blows it all up. Oh, Simon dies too, by the way. Simon got shot Have in the eye by his Simon? mother. He's there. He lives. He li- well, no, he doesn't, no, he doesn't he live. He dies. <laughs> he gets shot in the eyeball by his mom. Billy and Jade get out of there thanks to Bert, and they trying to escape. They escape New Raccoon City, but also Al gives them a, a thing like, "Hey, if you, if you get out of here, contact this person." And the the f-ing name on the the piece of paper is Ada, and I laugh so hard. Uh, I did too, Ada Wong. And then there was something we were talking about today. Is um, it says that she's in Japan, and um, I I was like. Do you think that they know that like Ada's not Japanese? Maybe she's just hanging out in Japan for weird reasons. For... Just thinking about Leon. <laughs> I mean, Leon's thinking about her. She's not thinking about Leon. Maybe in the back of her mind, she's thinking about uh, Leon. Okay. Like, he could give me a drink sometime. <laughs> How can I use Leon today? How can I use him today? Hmm. Um, which is a good point in this conversation to bring it to the fact that they bring up some very strange references um i did actually appreciate that there was a a piano puzzle that had to Mm -hmm. happen because like that's a pretty big staple of resident evil is that you have to like play piano and solve a puzzle the whole thing is then like going through the house and having to solve a puzzle and that's a pretty good yeah goof yeah um but then there's also that one dude who says cool all the time that had the audacity to look at the camera and say, I am the master of unlocking. How dare he? And I was just like, oh, God. Oh. You, sir, are no Jill Sandwich. You are no Jill Sandwich. There are probably other references that I, I'm missing off the top of my head. Yeah, but, totally. Um, but those are the ones that stick out to me that I was like, oh, wow, they 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 did that, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the the solving puzzles thing. I was like, yeah, that that tracks. Of course, Al Albert Wesker's clone would make his entire house into a puzzle. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, they also had the thing in the the last episode as well, where like the the tyrant that had been shacked up in Umbrella got out, right? Which I guess is the reason why everything goes bad. That would be my guess. Is that he? But also, it's just like here's this very skinny looking tyrant that gets out and then i don't know he escapes the rubble and that's it yeah he like show- we only literally show him in the final episode <laughs> that's it and like you see him in the thing trying to get out and then you see like his claw pop up at the end <sighs> um but i thought like i expected him to be a part of the final episode like i expected him to like get out and then have to like run away from him or something no no nope. none of that just there for the sake of being there and that's it <laughs> Oh man. Um, distinct lack of green herb in in this show. You're right. Yeah. Where have, where am I combining my? Oh, they also showed a typewriter at one point as well. Which oh, I thought was very funny. Right, they did show the typewriter in that weird underground Nazi bunker. Oh right. <laughs> There's like, she goes into a, a safe, safe room. room, literally. 
and then there's a broken typewriter in there and I was like that's pretty good yeah yeah I remember we were talking about the safe room and and the typewriter showed up so that that's another reference to the mechanics mm-hmm. of the, the game and but yeah they needed to be combining a bunch of herbs together and also first day spraying yep might help all those concussions she got it's true she got a lot of concussions I'm pretty sure she got knocked out at least once per episode I'm pretty sure yeah it was excessive girl has a glass jaw yeah it it was it was really excessive and like i said the the future stuff was really not even fun to watch no and then she got her friend killed she got a lot of people killed yeah yeah she she kind of had like leon syndrome where anybody around her died Oh, man, that just reminds me of the stealth helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I forgot about the stealth helicopter. Stealth helicopter. Uh, so for clarification, there's a scene in the, the future section where, like, she gets out of that that Nazi bunker. Yep. And she's, like, she gets out and everything's fine. And she's, like, oh, she's, like, oh, I'm so relieved. And then just, like, a light shines on her. And it's, like, helicopter. It's, like, how did you not know it was there? It's a helicopter. <laughs> oh, God, not quiet. They're not quiet. <laughs> oh, stealth helicopter. Stealth helicopter. Oh my god. So funny. Um But yeah, you you get to see like some some pretty famous Resident Evil baddies. Like you get the Doberman, the the Cerberus, um Lickers. You get the Lickers. Um, which I don't think mechanically the liquors work exactly the same as they're supposed to, but that's whatever. Um, there's a big spooter, which is awful for you. I'm sorry. Didn't like that. Didn't like that. Sorry. Um, the alligator, obviously, that was that was a, a alley, 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 alligator. How dare you? <laughs> um, that was in RE2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so like you had some some baddies there that um were familiar. Yeah. But, you know, we had zeros and not zombies. They literally, I think, only say the word zombie once, and that's in the last episode. Did they say zombie in the last episode? Because it's when Simon calls Evelyn, and he's, like, asking her about if she's drugging the other mom. Oh, right. And he basically says, like, she's acting like a zombie. Oh, right, right. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Anyways, this show's not good. Yeah. Do you want to see a plush dog in a bag? <laughs> that was so funny. God, they didn't even try to hide it because like she just yanks that bag up. It's like, whoop, yep. and, like whips it yep. as soon as she runs away. And I was just like, that is not a real dog in there. Nope. <laughs> I mean, it's very much you like you could see that's a plush dog. Yep. Um, <laughs> They also have like this stupid explanation like the the two girls who play jade like have very different teeth and they like try and explain that away at one point and i'm like that explanation makes zero sense this show's stupid this show's stupid yeah oh my yeah. god do you want to talk more about olive garden i love the all i don't I and mean, i don't love the olive garden but i do in this case <laughs> this is this was this was a good instance of the olive garden Yes. Resident Evil deserves better. Like I think we talked about this before we we got on here but like that CG show they or series they did last year was much better than this. Also cuz like you know it ties into the actual characters and lore and everything. Mm-hmm. So like you have more of an established, you know, presence of who's in here but like that was way better than this was. Also like it gets a lot of I'm trying to remember the name of it, but the the CG movie where I like Chris is drunk and Leon does like the <laughs> sweet bike moves and stuff. Uh, that's just great. That is art. What was that movie called? Uh, 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 that's a good question. Like that movie gets on all the time. I'm like, no, that movie is legitimately like in the same vein as how I'm going to defend Re- Resident Evil 6 all the time. That movie rules and it understands what Resident Evil actually has been. Mm hmm. Like, people always think that Resident Evil is, like, super serious. Brr, brr. Vendetta. Vendetta. God, that movie ruled. Um, that movie's so good. <laughs> but 
that's not what Resident Evil's ever been about. It's never been like a thousand percent super duper serial. Um, yeah. Again, like a Jill sandwich is a is a line in the original game. Where's everyone going? Bingo. <laughs> Like that's that's what the series is, and like leaning hard into that is is the way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, this this is not the way to do it. No. So I I hate it for um I actually don't hate it, but it's it sucks that they had set it up for a second season because these people probably wanted to work on it some more. Maybe um could have got more good Lance Reddick as Bert. That's really the big tragedy of this is that we don't get any more Lance Reddick. We could have seen how they decided to play Ada Wong in this series. Ooh. Everyone, all the people who are very confused that she is Asian in the Resident Evil 4 remake would have been like, wait, she's Asian? What? 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 Why are they making her look Asian? What? People are confused that Ada Wong is that Asian? That is a thing. I know it's the internet and it's very shocking times, but yes, that is a thing. Ada's been Asian since like 98. Yeah, well, tell that to people who play video games. Get out of here, you <laughs> fake Resident Evil fans. Get out of here. Um, Ada's always... I, her last name's Wong. Like... Look, critical thinking is hard for some people. Also, she was very, very clearly Asian in RE2 Remake too. Look. Critical thinking Viewing hard. things with your eyes is very hard for some people. I have vision and i know that ada wong is asian but then again like i actually am a big fan of resident evil so that's that. you actually pay attention yeah yeah um i don't just that's a, default that's a assume here. that everyone is white yes um yeah i think they could have done some interesting things in a second season at least from some of the stuff they said at least because we could have got more lance reddick as as goofy Bert, and then i would love to see what they'd done with ada or what else they would have like tried to tie into the the games and everything mm-hmm but we won't get that because they literally axed this after a, a month, as we said earlier. A month. In August, they were like, nope, you're done. See you later. Which is wild because it was saying that it like surpassed Stranger Things 4. So like you would think that they'd be like, oh. It... But again, we weren't seeing like the, the actual like numbers of like episode per episode of like no, how many no. people like the retention rate and everything. So like if it was a lot of people just like watching the first episode and like maybe a couple episodes after and then dropping it off, like then I think you have the argument of like, maybe this isn't something that we should invest more money in. If and also Netflix isn't really making a lot of money recently. So Netflix is making plenty of money. They're, well, not as much as they would like. They're to just make. being <laughs> about it. Yes. Um, so here's, here's my conundrum is that um, if I had not been watching this for our podcast, I would have dropped it very, very early. Like maybe. Oh yeah. Maybe same, the first same. episode. <laughs> But then I would have missed the twist, and I would have missed the Olive Garden. That is true. So that is very true. So I think it's worth it just to get it through it to see that stuff. Everything else, though, is a chore. Yep, I agree. But yeah. But at least we got to see that unlimited breadsticks, man. Unlimited breadsticks. Unlimited breadsticks. We got to find an image of good. unlimited breadsticks. We do. Yes. The- yes. One hundred percent. You know that's going to be 100% the, the podcast image if I can find it for sure. Oh, please, yes. But yeah, this isn't great. No, it's... I mean, it's, a lot of people said beforehand it wasn't great when they watched it. So I was yeah. like, uh... Nope. And it turns out it wasn't great. It wasn't great. But Lance Reddick was great. Yeah, he He's was. the only great thing in this show. Yeah, he is. Carries this show on his back. Yeah. He, Bless him. He did so much heavy lifting. hmm But yeah. I think that's it for this. That's it. We're going to go get some Olive Garden after this. Go get some unlimited breadsticks, pasta, whatever else they have. I don't know. I haven't been to an Olive Garden in like 10, 11 years. I mean, I'm into breadsticks and pasta, so. That's true. That is that is 100% your diet. Yep. <laughs> Put some <laughs> potatoes in there. Actually, um, I get the chicken and gnocchi soup, which gnocchi is made of potatoes. So there you go. There you go. There you go. But yeah, that's going to do it for this week's episode. So if you'd like more from us, head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cool is where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Al Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shiny Moment at Critical Analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unlimited, not unlimited, unedited <laughs> versions of the podcast. 
<laughs> and all while the bonus content as well. It's what I get for saying unlimited a lot this episode. I see un, and I'm like, oh, unlimited, of course. Uh, next week, we begin the month of November. Oh, my God, that's crazy. And it's time to take it back to a game that originally came out all, a while ago, but is now coming out for the first time ever in the United States. The first time ever officially. Officially, yes. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. We're going to talk about The Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero. The first Crossbell game. Yeah. It's been a while since we talked about a Trails game. That's true. So we'll talk about that next week. Mm -hmm. Let's go get some breadsticks. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs>